key area of chapter 14 is acid-base neutralization reactions, um, also titration. So this video is going to focus mostly on titration. But in order to do titration, you need an acid and a base. With titration, one will be unknown. Commonly, in beginner chemistry, the acid is unknown and the base is known. And then you form a water if the base is a metal hydroxide, so like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide. You always form water as long as the base is a, has a hydroxide on it. And then the salt doesn't necessarily have to be table salt in ACL. It could be any ionic compound they call a salt. So whatever remains after you form the water, the metal and the nonmetal come together to form the salt. An example would be hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide. And hydrochloric acid is a really strong acid, so it's also a strong electrolyte. What it means is it fully ionizes in water. Sodium hydroxide is a really strong base, so it also fully ionizes in water. It's a strong electrolyte. Strong acids, strong bases, and then here we have salt, sodium chloride as a product, which is very water soluble, and it's also made up of ions that dissociate in water. So sodium chloride is also a strong electrolyte. So if they are asking what's a strong electrolyte, what's a weak electrolyte, Strong electrolytes are strong acids, strong bases, and very soluble ionic compounds or salts. And then weak electrolytes are weak acids, weak bases, or salts slash ionic compounds that aren't very soluble. Water by itself without any ions in it is not an electrolyte. And sodium chloride as a solid, if it's not in water, it's not an electrolyte. So electrolytic solutions are in water. Milk of magnesia is a stomach antacid, so when your stomach produces too much acid, you may drink milk of magnesia. Here you can see them pouring hydrochloric acid in with it, and it's changing color. Hydrochloric acid is what your stomach secretes, and it's very, very low pH, meaning it's very acidic. And milk of magnesia is basic, but it's not so basic that it'll burn your esophagus. So it's just basic enough to neutralize some extra hydrochloric acid in your stomach. So for a titration, the formal definition is it's a laboratory method for determining the concentration of an unknown acid or base using a neutralization reaction. And by neutralization, they mean that the strong acid and the strong base is gone. It doesn't necessarily mean a pH 7. It means a pH that is more neutral than what you started with because you had a strong acid at low pH, you had a strong base maybe at high pH, and when you mix them together, um, your pH will be... Uh, more neutral, but it's not always 7. Only when it's a very strong acid, very strong base, and they're in perfectly equal amounts is it a perfectly neutral reaction where you just get um, water and sodium chloride. A standard solution, a solution of known concentration, is used. So this is sometimes called the titrant, and um, it's often, like I said, the base. So it's usually sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. Your goal is to get to an equivalence point. This is the point where, and it sounds fancy, there are stoichiometrically equivalent amounts of acid and base. What they mean there is moles acid equal moles base. That's all it means, moles acid equal moles base. Now visually, we can't see an equivalence point unless we add just one drop extra base. So we're not always at exactly equal moles acid exactly equal moles base. We always have just a little bit more base. But for the purposes of calculation, we say they're the same because one drop isn't a huge difference. So they can also represent it like this. And when you see brackets like this, it means molarity. So the molarity of your acid is now equal to your molarity of your base. Again, moles acid equal moles base would also work. Um, here is a barrette, and you can see it clamped in a barrette holder, and you don't use a utility clamp, you use a special barrette clamp. And then you can see the valve, and the valve right now is closed. If you turn it so that it is vertical, it would be open. Usually when you're running a titration, you have the valve diagonal, so it's coming out dropwise. The top of your barrette will read zero, and the bottom will read 50. You can almost see that here in this picture because it's coming out of the bottom. You're not pouring it out of the top. So you just read the top. There's no additional subtraction. You read where it turns light pink. You read that final. There's no additional subtraction. 
And typically barrette readings are taken to the hundredths place because they read to the tenths place. Like if you count the tick marks, they usually divide the one and the two into ten different um, tick marks, which means you go to the hundredths place when you're reading the barrette. Here's a good titration. It should be really light pink, and that means the moles of the base are just one drop past the moles of the acid, but we say moles base equal moles acid at this point. So when you calculate the moles of base and they ask for the moles of acid, you write that in there. They are considered the same. Now an endpoint, this has gone past the endpoint because it's hot pink, so this would be a bad titration. This one could go down the drain though because it has mostly a uh, base in it, which is typically sodium hydroxide, and that's just Drano. So many of your hot pink titrations just go down the drain unless instructed otherwise.